Well, that marriage didn't last very long. Hell, the honeymoon lasted just as long as the marriage. The marriage between Deion Sanders and the mainstream sports media, mainly the television networks, that marriage is rapidly ending. And let me start off by saying that I am not a Deion Sanders hater. I am not weirdly obsessed with hating on Deion Sanders like someone else in the media, Jason Whitlock. Every time I see Jason Whitlock on my Twitter feed, every single time, this is no exaggeration, he is spanking the wanker to Deion Sanders. I told you I was right. This man is a false god. Please, Lord, this man needs Jesus. Heal this man. Help me exploit his demons. Dude, we get it. We understand. You don't like Deion Sanders. Move on. Jason Whitlock makes so many great points on other issues relating to mythical racism. It's just, it's weird. It is weird to see him being this obsessed with Deion Sanders. The only other time I have seen someone in sports media this obsessed with an athlete or a public figure is Skip Bayless's obsession with LeBron James. Now, on one side, you have Jason Whitlock obsessing over the downfall of Deion Sanders. On the other side, you had the rest of the mainstream media pretending like Deion Sanders was the best coach in college football. Key word, pretending. This marriage between Deion Sanders and the mainstream media, it was built on the foundation of a lie. And any time a relationship is built on a lie, there is only one way it can end. Divorce. Now, I think Deion Sanders is a good coach. He's not a great coach just yet, but he's a good coach. But Deion Sanders made one crucial mistake in Colorado. He made one stake that veteran head coaches will avoid at all costs. Deion Sanders failed to minimize distractions. Hell, he became the primary distraction. He allowed this to happen because he didn't put a stop to it. He's being interviewed and followed around by 60 minutes, giving them access to his program in the middle of the season. I don't see Nick Saban on 60 minutes in the middle of September. I don't see James Franklin inviting his celebrity celebrity friends to sit on the sidelines during games. I don't see Brian Kelly having Lil Wayne lead his team onto the field. And Lil Wayne is from Louisiana. You want to know why you don't see that? They are worried about winning football games. They're worried about competing for championships. They're not worried about receiving praise from the shit fucks in the mainstream media. There are two things that head coaches hate more than anything else unnecessary publicity and distractions. When Deion Sanders was a player, he loved publicity. He loved being the center of attention. His coaches, they were willing to tolerate it because Deion Sanders was the best in the league. Hell, he might be the best of all time at his position. Deion Sanders could get on the field and he could back it up. These kids that he is coaching in Colorado, they can't do that. He allowed them to buy into the hype when there was absolutely no substance behind it. After they beat TCU during the opening weekend of the season, fans in the media, they crowned Deion Sanders as the best coach in college football. Television ratings were gigantic. Colorado was pulling 8, 9, sometimes 10 million viewers. Networks, they are fighting to put them on in prime time. Next Saturday... Washington is playing Stanford, the team that just humiliated Colorado on national television. Now, Washington-Stanford, it's not what I would call a sexy matchup, but Washington is one of the best teams in the country. They are leading what I believe is the best conference in college football this year. It sucks that the Pac-12 is going to be disbanded, but I guess that's what happens when you listen to the Fauci and you cancel your entire season over the Covey. Washington has the leading candidate to win the Heisman. Their game, this was supposed to be on ABC next weekend. That ain't going to happen because ABC, they decide to go with Colorado UCLA. <laughs> Trust me, these television networks, they are not going to be fighting over Deion Sanders in Colorado for very much longer. I told you guys last month, all it's going to take, two, three losses, and the viewing public, they would lose interest in Deion Sanders in Colorado. Once the viewing public loses interest, the media will lose interest, and the networks will essentially forget about him for this season. These networks have one goal, draw ratings. That's it. Unfortunately for Deion Sanders, he's just no longer the ratings draw that he was earlier in the season. That game last Friday night, Colorado-Stanford, it drew 3.3 million viewers on ESPN. Easily, easily, the least watched game of the season. But KC, that's because the game was on so late. 
Um, that's bullshit. It was a Friday night. Last month, their overtime win against Colorado State, it finished at 1 o'clock in the morning. But for some reason, 9 million people didn't mind staying up to watch the entire game. But that's different, KC. Colorado was up 29-0 at halftime. People thought the game was over. Maybe so. I mean, I'm sure that had something to do with it, but 3.3 million. That is the average for the entire game. It's not like there were 9, 10 million people watching the first half and 200,000 sticking around for the second half. The truth is, people are losing interest. And people are losing interest because Colorado ain't winning. It's really that simple. People watch winners. After the game last Friday night, Deion Sanders, he addressed his players in the locker room. Now, he didn't yell, he didn't scream, he didn't curse, which I actually give him credit for. I have a hard time not cursing when I'm happy about something. You get me pissed off about my Saints or Pelicans, my cursing is uncontrollable. But after being humiliated on national TV in front of an audience that is rapidly, rapidly dwindling, Deion Sanders addressed his team. Watch it for yourself. You're not going to be taken care of. You're not going to be looked after. You're not going to have the luxuries of all this. And you're going to have to go out there and get it on your own and work your butt off. Because ain't nobody going to give you nothing. I don't understand. What we just did today was pathetic. All the love that you received, all the love that we received, oh, you getting ready to see that flip. And don't get beside yourself on social media and start responding to the foolishness because they're right. You know what? He is 100% right here. I agree with everything that he just said. But here's the problem. This should have been the message after they beat TCU. This should have been the message when the media was pretending this was one of the best teams in college football. Sean Payton, he used to repeat this saying when he was coaching the Saints. Sometimes he would even put blocks of cheese in the players' lockers just to reiterate his point. When local and national media were hyping up the Saints, Sean Payton would tell his players, do not bite the cheese. Nick Saban has a similar mentality in Alabama. Don't bite into the shit sandwich. Media hype is not real. This speech from Deion Sanders last Friday night, I think it's too little too late. This mentality, it has already been established in that locker room. During halftime of that game, one of the players, I think it might have been his son, Shador Sanders. During halftime of that game, this kid is on social media talking to people on Twitter. Really? Really? Is that happening anywhere else? Does any other program have players dicking around on social media during the game? Several years ago, the Pittsburgh Steelers, they had a similar problem with Juju Smith-Schuster. He was dancing around on TikTok doing his best impersonation of Jackie Mahomes, the dancing queen. If I remember correctly, I think he even filmed a post-game speech from Mike Tomlin and posted it to social media. Now, don't quote me on that, but I think it was him or... Maybe it was Antonio Brown. Either way, you know what happened not too long after? His dumbass was off the team. Seriously, what does this tell you about the mentality in that locker room in Colorado? Tells me one of two things. One, Deion Sanders doesn't have control of this team. They don't have discipline. Or two, the players don't respect him. And when I say respect, I'm not talking about his resume. I'm not talking about his stature. What I'm saying is... They are not taking Deion Sanders seriously. But not everyone is critical of Deion Sanders this morning. He can always rely on his brother, Stephen A. Smith. Yesterday morning on First Take, Stephen A., he addressed the humiliation of Colorado. Now, he didn't really say anything wrong. Matter of fact, I happen to agree with most of what he said. He criticized the entire team. He even went after Shador Sanders. But there was one glaring omission in his criticism. There was one person that Stephen A. Smith let slide. Watch for yourself. I believe that Deion Sanders is a coach. I think he's a hell of a coach. He needs some dogs, as he told us. Mm -hmm. He's about seven or eight dogs away, but here's the problem. The players got caught up in the shine their coach generated, and I'm calling out his son, Shadir Sanders, who I love and I think has star written all over him. But whether it was you or by accident, it was somebody on your social media team, you cannot have something being posted at halftime of a damn game. It is no longer a laughing matter. Y'all are getting your ass kicked. 
show up, stand up, because your daddy and to the players on that squad, your coach is as much bravado as he had, as much swag as he had. He was the best on the planet. Week in and week out, you knew primetime Deion Sanders was the best probably ever. Y'all ain't on that level. Stop acting like it. Let me ask you something. Let's pretend for a second that this same thing is happening with James Franklin at Penn State. Exact same scenario. Who do you think Stephen A. Smith is blaming? Does he blame the players? Sure. But do you really think he would not hold James Franklin accountable here? Do you really think he fails to even give a hint of criticism to James Franklin? Like I said, Stephen A. Smith wasn't wrong in what he said, but where was the criticism of Deion Sanders? At the end of the day, he is the head coach. You mean to tell me he is blameless here? Deion Sanders, he is responsible for this team. He is responsible for his players. For the past two years, I have been highly critical of my Saints. Who do I blame for their constant, huge, embarrassing failure? Dennis Allen. Why? He's the coach. But Stephen A. Smith, he's not going to blame Deion Sanders. No, 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 no. He can't do that. He can't risk having his invitation rescinded from sitting on the sidelines during games. Stephen A's got to protect his brother. He wouldn't dare criticize Deion Sanders on national television. The media is such a joke. This same media was demonizing Deion Sanders during the spring for using the transfer portal to build his team. He wins one game against TCU. Media falls in love with him. Colorado loses a few games. Honeymoon over. Hell, marriage on the rocks. I think Deion Sanders is going to be okay. I think he's got what it takes to be an elite coach at college football. But like I said in the beginning, he made a crucial mistake at the beginning of the season. He not only failed to minimize distractions, Deion Sanders became the distraction. He bought into the media hype and the kids followed his lead. But give me your thoughts. Is the marriage between the media and Deion Sanders coming to an end? Do you think we'll start seeing these networks stop giving Colorado these big primetime slots? I think ratings are going to get worse. Colorado, they lost five, maybe six million viewers in the span of a couple of weeks. The public is losing interest. And looking at their schedule, Colorado, they might not make a bowl game. This team could go 5-7. and seven. Hell, it's entirely possible they don't win another game this season. Now, I don't think that will happen, but it is strongly possible. Go look at their schedule for yourself. The next five weeks are an absolute grind. Pac-12 is tough. Like I said, best conference in football. But you let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. I appreciate your support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.